bookshops have got the blues. Traditional bookstores are struggling to compete with fierce competition from online rivals like Amazon. And reading habits are changing as more and more people turn to ebooks and digital readers. American chain Borders went bankrupt last year, and sales have slowed too at Waterstones, the UK's biggest chain of bookshops. Under its old owner, HMV, Waterstones shop managers were given maps of how to display books, and little attention was given to tailoring the experience for the local audience. In a bid to turn the company around, James Daunt, the owner of the independent London chain, Daunt Books, was hired as the company's new managing director. The question is, can the local bookshop model, where staff are hands-on and local audiences are more indulged, be applied to a nationwide chain like Waterstones? Some of it is, is simply the old-fashioned bookselling things making the shops compelling in terms of how we curate them and the books that we put in them and how we do the basics of, of our bookselling job. And again, that had something that, that had latterly become uh, done with, uh, with, with less effectiveness. But also, um, good old-fashioned spend money, make them nicer, do them up, uh, invest in the fixtures, make them uh, attractive places and enjoyable places in which to spend time, and also invest in our people. Um, we have good booksellers, we're renowned for it, but actually we haven't been training and we haven't been investing them. And, and that's the, sort of probably the third part of, of what is a necessary transformation. And Waterstones is already well placed on many high streets in the UK. But despite Mr Daunt's confidence, there are worries that renovating shops and training staff alone won't be enough to save the company's fates. And there are already warning signs in the United States, where some very large towns now have no bookstore at all. It does need um, a pretty uh, big injection of excitement and enthusiasm from the new owner and new managers uh, in order to uh, consolidate its position. I think there's a, a real risk uh, that it um, disappears altogether if that can't be achieved. Introducing the new Kindle from Amazon. And it's not just the physical bookshop. The rise of the ebook market defied all predictions, and now the physical book itself, once seen as an irreplaceable and tactile companion, is also under threat. Some people shop for books online to save money, others simply want to save space on their shelves or reduce the weight of their holiday luggage. You know, there is a bleak story to tell, which is that you know, the size of the print market will shrink, people will buy fewer books, but it doesn't mean that that kind of close, careful, personal curation will go away. Tesco killed a lot of books, a lot of butcher shops, but people are still opening new butcher shops. It's just they're very different kinds of butcher shops with a very different vision. They sell careful artisanal sausages and they give you a photograph and name, the name of the pig that your sausage was made from and, you know, what a happy life he had and, um, you know, a video of him playing before he was slaughtered and all this kind of thing. And I think, you know, bookshops, again, need to think in those terms of becoming a wonderful bookshop in a world in which um, the Kindle exists. But being that wonderful bookshop isn't easy. Shops are frequently used now as showrooms where people browse for books using a bookseller's recommendations only to leave the store and buy the book online later for less. Independent bookshops say there's still a market for the service they provide, but they really have to go the extra mile to compete. You have to make your shop, the person's shopping experience really um, exceptional. You have to give very, very good service you have to go out of your way to offer extras. You have to be nice to people's children, um, nice to their dogs. We keep dog biscuits for visiting dogs. We offer children the use of our loo. Um, we do a very good recommending service and we've got a loyalty card. Anything we can think of that will make our shop a really nice place to come to. I think the younger generation are becoming more internet um, friendly, um, but we well, we're still in business, so obviously there's still a demand for it. All bookshops, from the big chains like Waterstones to the small independents like the one behind me, face a difficult challenge. But it's probably too early to sound the death knell for the bookshop just yet. Book publishers, of course, have faith in the book as a physical object, and they make better presents too. You can't wrap a digital download. So the bookstore clearly has a place, but they're going to continue to have to evolve and adapt if they're going to survive as fixtures on our high streets. Daniel Garahan, Financial Times, London.